The federal government is giving Ontario until the end of day today to come up with a housing plan, or else the province risks losing more than $350 million in federal funding. This comes after Premier Doug Ford's announcement that the province won't automatically approve the building of fourplexes. This is a no-brainer. Uh, you don't put four, six, eight-story buildings in the middle of a community of single-dwelling homes. Uh, find or go out, ask anyone, anyone with a home here, uh, do you want a four-story or six-story tower behind you? Absolutely, they don't. Ontario NDP leader Merritt Stiles joins me now. Welcome back to the show. Great to be here. So Ontario is in the throes of a housing crisis, and Premier Doug Ford has said automatically allowing fourplexes province-wide is off the table. He doesn't want that sort of density everywhere. Did he make the right call on this one? No, absolutely not. It's outrageous for Doug Ford to dismiss a, a good, smart housing solution like fourplexes in the midst of a housing crisis. And in fact, you know, as I've said earlier this week, I think his comments are deeply insulting as well to so many Ontarians. He's essentially telling people that anyone who can't afford a single detached home, well, they're not welcome in the neighborhood. So I think it's outrageous. I think it's insulting. And it's certainly not going to help us to build the housing that we desperately need uh, in this province. The Premier's point is that there will be a lot of homeowners up in arms when densification comes to their neighbourhood. It could ruin the character of some of these more established places in the province. Does he have a point? There could be a lot of blowback. It could create a lot of uh, animosity and anxiety and, and trouble in some neighbourhoods right across the province. Well, I, I think, first of all, that We've been on this road for a while now, and what we're hearing and what I'm hearing from Ontarians everywhere I go across this province, small towns, big cities, everywhere, is desperation for housing, right? We can't recruit people to come and work in our communities, and we can't uh, find a place for them to live to stay there. It's, it's a really bad situation, uh, and so I think that it's completely out of touch of Doug Ford to not recognize that we need these solutions. And look, Absolutely. Sometimes communities aren't all that keen, but we're talking about fourplexes. And, and some of the premier's comments over the last few days lead me to think he doesn't really even know what that is. A lot of people live in fourplexes. I've lived in fourplexes. Many people live in fourplexes. It, it's, a, it's a solution that I think is not inconsistent with, you know, belongs in many communities. And I think Ontarians are ready for that. They want to see solutions. It's impacting so many of us. And the government can't shut the door on that. And, you know, I'll add to one more thing, which is what the premier's failing to do here as well is, is show some bold leadership and meet the moment. I think people are looking for that. They want real leadership from their from their premier and they're not getting it. You don't think the premier knows what a fourplex is? Well, when he was asked about it the other day, he made it sound like it was uh, it was always going to be a four story tower. And that's not the case. Right. I mean, I, I, I make it look like this. It's a box. Divide it down the middle, divide it in half. This is a fourplex. And those exist in many communities. And I think, again, it's showing that he doesn't really understand or chooses not to understand uh, what this is go it's going to take to build the density we need. And the other thing about this, right, is people want options. We have to have options. Uh, not everybody is going to be able to afford a detached single family home. Uh, so we need options. We need more affordable and attainable options. And this government is ignoring uh, many of the options that we have out there, uh, the solutions that have been presented to us by experts. Uh, and it's very disappointing. There could be consequences to this decision and some of the other housing decisions they've taken over the last little while. The federal government coming out today saying that if the province does not come up with a new housing plan, they risk losing $350 million for affordable housing. There's a bit of a threat from Ottawa. That's a lot of money. How do you think the Ford government should proceed? Should they just leave this $350 million on the table or should they change course? Well, look, uh, in Ontario, it's true. And under the Ford Conservatives, housing starts are down. They aren't up. Housing has never been so expensive. And as you said, we learned today that the Ford Conservative government here in Ontario is not meeting those federal affordable housing targets. Uh, we need those to meet those targets to qualify for that federal housing money. And I think that Ontarians are going to be deeply disappointed to think that the government is making a choice here 
uh, not to find solutions like that, not to find the the funding to be able to help us uh, build the affordable housing we need. And you know, let's face it too, right? It was it's been 30 years since this province and and the country, thank, frankly, started to actually get back build housing themselves. So governments used to build housing. Governments used to build affordable housing, rent geared to income, co-op housing. We need to get back into that uh, again. And it's one of the things that we in the NDP have been calling for. I think Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation data suggested that there was a slight uptick in housing starts in Toronto last year. But I take your point about across the province, we're certainly not meeting, yeah. we're not meeting demand. And, and nationwide, the problem is is huge. We need many and million more. And of course, we more. have a new mayor. And we have a new mayor in Toronto who's actually been taking some bold action, which is really exciting and moving us forward really quickly. Uh, that's Olivia Chow. But but I think, yeah, absolutely across the province, it's a crisis. It's very real. And we are not seeing uh, things moving forward as quickly as they should. And, you know, the other thing that we haven't talked about is the fact that the government in, in Ontario took away some of the tools that municipalities had mm-hmm. to be able to to move developers along to building the truly affordable housing that we need and and to have uh, the, the, the funds to be able to service, uh, you know, those those developments. So it's a really big problem. And the government has kind of downloaded all the responsibility onto municipalities without actually providing them with the tools that they need. And in fairness to the provincial and federal governments, the high interest rates from the Bank of Canada have not helped with housing starts. And and certainly that's one reason why uh, builders are reluctant to put shovels in the ground when it costs so much to finance these sort of things. I just want to switch gears a little bit and talk about Highway 413. This is, you know, for our nationwide audience, why are we talking about a local highway? But it's been a big issue between the federal government and the province. The feds have just announced that they are not going to do a federal impact assessment on this major piece of road work. And it's causing a lot of controversy in a lot of circles. Environmentalists, local residents worried about a brand new highway going through some very key parts of the province, some farmlands, some wetlands. There's a lot of uh, animals, creatures, wildlife that could be affected by such development. What do you make of Ottawa deciding not to put it through that more rigorous federal review and essentially allowing the province to go ahead? Well, first of all, I'd say the Doug Ford government has a terrible track record, both when it comes to trampling on environmental protections, but also uh, being dishonest about what they're doing. All you have to do is look at what happened with the green belt. Uh, you know, let's not forget we have a, a provincial government here right now in Ontario that's being investigated by the RCMP, uh, but also, you know, not just being dishonest about what they're doing, but also who stands to benefit. And Ontarians really do deserve to understand the full cost of this project. It's not just the financial costs, of course, it's also uh, the impact on floodplains and farms and species at risk. So it's very disappointing to see the federal government simply throwing their hands up in the air. Uh, They could and they should introduce legislation right now. Uh, they could update the Impact Assessment Act. Uh, they could redesignate the Highway 413 project under it. And that would be one way that Ontarians could see the full cost of the project. You saw the blowback. Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo, the federal environment minister, got over his statements that the federal government was getting out of the business of funding roads. He later walked that back and said he just meant certain large projects. Is there not a political price to pay for some politicians who stand in the way of infrastructure projects that could offer quite a bit of relief to a region of the country where gridlock is a big issue. A lot of people spending a long time in their cars to getting to and from work. Why why not have this sort of project that would give people some help, some relief? Yeah, well, first of all, I should say, um, there are other al- options here, but we're not saying that you don't build roads ever and that we don't need infrastructure. Um, Obviously, we do need to look at those things, and we have a lot of roads and highways in this province right now that are in in terrible states of disrepair because the government isn't has again downloaded all of that onto municipalities. Um, but I think it's it's also an issue um, that that we are, we do have to look. It, it's not holding things up, right? We're not trying to stop this. What we need to do is know the full cost of it. And we have farmers, we have uh, species at risk uh, that are, we have a lot of people concerned about those issues, uh, issues around the flood plains that this highway is going to go through that need to be examined, I think, before you take on a project 
project like this. And so I think it's very important that we do that right, because we will otherwise pay the price down the road. And I would also add that this government, we forced a vote here at the legislature a couple weeks ago to get the government to try to make better use of the one big toll highway that we have here, the 407. Yeah. It's privately run and privately collected tolls. And if the government pushed the company and said, no, we're going to move uh, freight trucks over there and, and make it free for them, we would just immediately relieve an enormous amount of congestion on big highways like the 401. And that's one of the big issues here. So there's a lot of things that this government is choosing not to do, but absolutely, you know, we can build infrastructure, we can do it well, uh, but we also have to understand what the real cost is going to be down the road. Right. Okay, let's leave it there. Thank you so much, Ontario NDP leader Merritt Stiles. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you.